Hello YouTube family. I just came in from working in the garden so I'm like winded and sweating but it was a beautiful morning and it's supposed to get close to 80 today. I mean close to 90 I think 88 it said. So I knew it was gonna get hot I better get out there quickly. Um, but I just had a thought while I was out there working that I wanted to share with you because I'm some people say to me, you know, how do we get a lot done here because they spend so many hours a day on their homeschooling that they don't have time to work in the garden or even, you know, keep up with their home or things like that because there's so much time. And so I just was thinking when I was out there digging that perhaps you are laboring too hard to do something that you wouldn't need to labor at all to do. And so I was thinking about inspiring learning how to inspire learning oh that's better it's nice and cool under this we have a canopy up right now so anyway perhaps you're working too hard there are things that you can do to inspire learning in your children children have a natural desire to learn and if they're inspired and they're given the time and the space they will teach themselves things because they're so naturally curious I was watching um, someone, a child this week we had at our home who was learning how to ride a bike. And they, didn't, they were a little bit older than the average age when you would learn how to ride a bike. Um, but they did not have to be taught. So we got out one of our scoot bikes, which are bikes without pedals, and just put it there. And so as the adults were talking and the child was getting on the bike, I can see in the background I'm watching him and that natural progression is already starting to happen it's like first it's kind of wobbly pushing his feet along kind of coasting but it didn't nobody had to say keep going no he had that drive on his own and then pretty soon he's kind of trying to put his feet up and balance a little bit and then the distances get farther and then he drags it up a little bit to where there's a little bit more of a slope of a hill so that he can kind of coast down and by the end of the day there was another little small bike with pedals and he got on that bike and was able to pedal short distances. Why is that? Was there an adult there holding it, trying to coax him, saying do this, do that? No, there wasn't. It was the natural desire to learn plus the opportunity to practice at his own pace. And that same um, recipe can work for any of our homes, any of our homeschooling situation, any subject. All you have to do is take that child that you already have that already has the desire to learn and put them in the right place Mommy. with the right resources. James! Hi! James Thank was you. looking for worms. James really likes worms, don't you? You found a big one. So one thing that I like to do in our home is to think about how I can strategically make our place um, more um, inspiring to curiosity and so I will sometimes I'll go through my bookshelves Oops, something blew over what was it I will glance through our bookshelves and see if there's any books that I know that a child might be interested in that they haven't read recently or at all go find a worm for me yeah go get me a worm I want worm and I'll just kind of set those books. I might set a couple books on the couch when I, where I know a child would find them. Or um, this morning I found um, this really old book. It was something about creative writing. It was kind of like a... I, I'm sure it was from way before I was born. And I don't even know who gave it to me. People give me boxes of stuff. But it was kind of like a workbook that you didn't write in. And it had just different creative writing ideas and different challenges. And I put that on the table with some paper next to it. And sure enough, about 30 minutes later, one of my kids wanders by and they start looking through this book. And they're like, oh, look at this. And I said, okay, I'll challenge you to do that page. It was, can you think of a letter or a word that starts with the letter C for each of these different types of things, like something yummy to eat, um, something that you would wear. And so it had all these different challenges. And I said, I'll challenge you and we'll see if our answers are the same. And so. Next thing you know, two more kids came along and wanted to try to do this themselves also. So what was the alternative to that situation is that I could have sat down at the table, I could have forced everybody to sit down, which is exhausting in its own right when you have a lot of kids, and then I could say, all right, here's your assignment today. Here's your paper. You all need to come up with, you know, 
ex and then I would have explained it to them. So that would totally be a fine way to do it. That would have worked. However, what are the differences in the attitudes of the people coming? Are they just saying, all right, let me get this over with so that it's done? Or is there this challenge of like, oh, maybe I could do that too. Maybe I could do that too. And there's this excitement. Whoa, buddy, you found a tiny one. Yeah. Tiny worm. Is it a big one? So just think about that as you're going through your day today. What are some ways? Uh oh, find it. What are some ways that you could inspire learning in your kids today? Maybe um, we have snap circuits. Have you ever heard of snap circuits? I can link those below if I can find them. Do they even sell those on Amazon anymore? We have an older set. Yes, you can. That's fine. Let me walk you to the garden while we chat. You know, maybe you could set out a kit of something like that. Or, um, oh, Leo found this um, book of word searches and crossword puzzles. That is just as effective as some type of um, English book about definitions and trying to teach definitions because he, it was bothering him that he couldn't get that crossword puzzle. And um, he was asking me the meanings of different words and trying to figure that out on his own. So it's just a, a matter of inspiring people rather than re require. Inspire instead of require. Okay, let me pause for a minute and show you what Bella and I have been working on. Bella's weeding over there. This is our garden. So we just planted these watermelon plants and you can see we're putting this cardboard all around it and then we're going to layer up piles of mulch so that it'll keep them very moist and happy in there. So I actually share this on my Instagram stories. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's just my name, Julie Crakey. But I was sharing last week, I think, that I learned a tip of how to um, take the bitterness out of lettuce. So when you go to pick your lettuce, because you know garden lettuce starts getting bitter when it gets hot. So go out in the morning with a bucket of really cold water. Take that out with you. Pick your lettuce and dump it right into that bucket of cold water and then let it sit in there for one hour and then move it into like a Tupperware, a Ziploc, whatever you want to store it in and put it in your refrigerator for the rest of the day and then the next day you can eat it. And it will take a lot of that bitterness. Oh, you found another one. It'll take a lot of that bitterness out of your lettuce. So. They want not... Tiny one? Big one oh, or two? There's one that's long. a big one over there. Mom, you want to show me? There's one that's long. Yeah. yeah, there's some huge worms. So we have the garlic. On, we have the zucchini. This is um, chard. That's just some remains of spinach. This big tarp thing I laid down to kill the weeds under here so that I can plant more easily. This is onions, bed of onions. <coughs> Mama has the sniffles. My allergies have been bothering me. Oh, look at Samuel's tomato plants. Are they huge? They're way bigger than mine. No, wait, Samuel's lettuce? No, his tomato plants. Oh, I was gonna say he just Oh, I see, I see the worm. His lettuce don't look too good because he picked look at that. all the big leaves. He just picked the lettuce, yeah. That's fun. These are peas, which are getting close. People have been carefully watching the pea pods to see if they plump up. They want to be the first one to get it. A few beets here. We've put in some watermelon. These are some of the blackberry bushes. This is just two. The rest of them are up at the top of our property. There's 33 up there. Yep, there's, the ones up there are just little starts, but these are... Uh, this is the first year that they're really grown, so that's exciting. We just planted these last year. These are colored peppers, honeydew melon. Oh, I said zucchini. This is our fun trellis that we planted. We're hoping the kids can hide in there whenever those green beans are up. And then all these tomatoes and beans over there. That hasn't changed much since the last time I gave you an update. It hasn't been that long. What has it been, two weeks since I gave you an update? We're just really excited. Last year our garden was pretty pathetic, and so, yeah, you're doing good. So we are really excited that we actually have um, things growing and doing well, and no goats are eating them. That's what happened last year. We had some goats here, and they came in one day, and the gate, yeah, the they gate broke in one day and just kind of leveled the garden. And I was so discouraged, and I was pregnant with Lydia, so it was, you know it's hard to get things done anyway when you're pregnant. <laughs> So it was kind of, the garden was a fail last year's. 
which makes us extra excited this year that it's happening. Let's go see what the other kids are doing because I've left them to their own devices this morning. I just wanted a little update of what you were doing this morning. What are you fixing? Um, right now we're fixing Leo's bike, then we'll fix mine. What's wrong with Leo's bike? Well, the shifter. The shifter. And he can't find the nut big enough. It's not shifting properly? Yeah, it's like stuck in one chair, I think. Oh. So we changed out this thing. To put a new, an entirely new one on. Put a, this is a new one. And yeah, we had to take apart the chain and then put it in to get this new thing on. How'd you guys learn how to do all this? We didn't. Papa showed you. Yeah. He's pretty nifty with that kind of stuff, isn't he? Yeah, we need to find it. So he's searching for one. Not. Oh, James found more worms. He's kind of focused on this today, aren't you, James? Leo had his own drone, but he was given one yesterday by somebody who was getting rid of theirs, so he's been exploring it. And Looking at the differences in the two. I think the blades automatically stop when it crashes. Which is pretty nice for... Yeah, that is a nice feature. My drone There's three speeds, and it's really pretty fast. He says pretty good flying skills. Yeah, he does have good flying skills. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Maybe you can take some videos of our property. We just finished lunch and we, we are reading this book right now. Oops, let go, Lydia. I had just been telling my friend Alicia about this book that my mom had read to us when I was a kid. And so now we are reading it. We just finished five chapters at lunch. It was so good. Each chapter is kind of like its own little short story that this author wrote about her Nor Norwegian mom, I guess. Anyway. It was, it was really good. We were enjoying it a lot, but we had to stop because um, Bella's 4-H group starts back today for the first time since it's been several months now that they paused all of the groups. It starts again today, and so she needed to finish math before that happened. You're working on math, too, and Silas is playing with my phone. <clears throat> what are you doing with it, Silas, while you wait for a screenshot? He was taking pictures. Hey, focus. He was taking pictures of the boys, making it look like they were in space. So that was kind of fun. Occupying this little person right here is almost like a full time position these days. <laughs> I really almost just need one person just to entertain James while everybody else does their work because. He's just had that kind of fun lately. It's probably going to be you. Lydia, can you say hi to everybody? Hi to everybody. Not see him, yo. Sometimes if we don't see enough Lydia, people get sad. They get sad if they don't see enough of you. Can you say hi? Can you say all is well? Mom. Lydia has um, started wanting food a lot. And she's actually crawling around, picking things up off the floor and putting them in her mouth. I'm, I'm, I'm sad about that because, you know, I have kids who do Legos and things and I never had to pay close attention to it because she didn't put anything in her mouth until this week and now every little thing she's finding on the floor she's putting in her mouth. So we're having to do major um, floor duty, watching the floor all the time. Oh, I heard the phone ring. The day is drawing to a close. Jeremiah and I are doing a reading lesson today. 
I actually had a very sweet mom who watches our channel send me a brand new Teach Your Child to Read book. She had it and saw that mine was falling to pieces, so she sent us that one. Isn't that great? So Jeremiah gets to be the first boy to go through a new book that's not falling apart. Elsie had to learn from a falling apart one, didn't she? You um, noticed yesterday I did not have a video out Monday. This video will go out Tuesday morning for the month of June. I am going down to just three videos a week. Plus, of course, on Sunday, Jason and I are doing a series together on biblically responsible investing, so be sure to look at that. But I am actually working on a project, something big that I am starting, and I need a little bit more time to work on that. It's something that I am hoping will be a great blessing to homeschool moms who need support and community and encouragement. So while I just start working on that, I'm cutting down a little bit on my daily videos down to three days a week. It's hard to juggle it all. Do you know what I mean, moms? It's hard to juggle it all. But right now, it's just me and Jeremiah. We're going to read. We're going to make dinner. And we will see you guys soon. I hope you have a wonderful day with your family. Bye-bye. Can you say bye? Bye. <laughs> bye.